I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. A Middletown man faces a series of charges as a result of yesterday's high-speed chase that ended with a vehicle crash in the town of Wewayanda. 25-year-old Nicholas Rose lost control of his pickup truck on Route 6, ending a police chase that had begun in the city of Middletown. Rose ignored police attempts to pull him over after officers had responded to a call of an erratic driver. The chase reached speeds of 80 miles an hour before the pickup ran off the road. Rose wasn't injured, but he now faces charges of driving while intoxicated, resisting arrest, reckless driving, and fleeing a police officer. He's being held on $10,000 bail in Orange County Jail. A fallen hero will be remembered at West Point. Funeral services will be held Friday morning at the Cadet Chapel for Major Thomas Kennedy, the Rockland County native and member of the West Point class of 2000, who was killed as the result of a suicide bomb attack in Afghanistan earlier this month. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the incident that took the lives of four Americans. Among Major Kennedy's numerous military honors, the Bronze Star Medal and Meritorious Service Medal, burial will be at West Point's Post Cemetery. Town of Walkill Police have arrested a Middletown man who was wanted for six uh, bank robberies in Brooklyn. 37-year-old Ernest Morris was picked up without incident while walking along Route 211 East. Assisting in his arrest, state police, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, and the U.S. Marshal's Office. It is a sign of a growing rift between City of Newburgh police officers and the City Council. Members of the City's Police Benevolence Association issued a vote of no confidence in the City Council. A statement from Mark Miller, a spokesman for Teamsters Local 445, the union that represents the police officers, said they're upset that council members have refused to accept the conclusion reached by an Orange County grand jury that two officers acted in self-defense when they shot and killed Michael Lebhardt last March. The PBA says the council's stance has put Newburgh City cops at increased risk. Members of the Lebhardt family are in the midst of a 15-day vigil outside the site of the shooting. Well, don't look for any immediate relief from those rising gas prices that are now expected to make a return trip to the $4 a gallon range. Average retail pump prices across the state have gone up more than $0.06 cents in the past week, and they're $0.23 cents per gallon higher than they were a month ago. A series of problems at U.S. refineries uh, have reportedly contributed to the rising prices, along with the uh, worries uh, over the European economic crisis and tensions in the Middle East. Energy analysts say a downward price trend isn't expected until the summer driving season ends in mid-September. His agency is a frequent target of area commuters and taxpayers. And this morning, the top man at the MTA defended the work of the transit system during a speech to members of the Dutchess County Chamber of Commerce in Poughkeepsie. A Metropolitan Transportation Authority Chairman and CEO, Joseph Lota, outlined the MTA's cost containment and efficiency initiatives, and he said he wouldn't be opposed to cutting the highly unpopular MTA payroll tax in Orange and Dutchess counties, and that is something that the state legislature would have to do ultimately. Lotus said uh, the MTA is making headway in the cutting of uh, discretionary spending amid the challenge of a rising pension and health insurance costs. His Hudson Valley visit comes following an MTA vote last month to pursue a toll and fare increase to generate $450 million towards their 2000, 2013 budget. Public hearings on the proposed MTA fare hikes will be held in November. And Snowball was recovering today from his overnight ordeal. Snowball is an albino wallaby who lives at the Noah's Ark 2 Animal Sanctuary in the town of Goshen. But when an employee failed to latch his gate last evening, Snowball made his escape and bounded off. And while several people spotted him, catching him would prove difficult. The police came and they were trying to help us. And it was already getting dark and he just proceeded to go into the woods and uh, so I thought there was no way we could follow him. 
was driving home, I was on police drive, and I saw like a white thing just sitting in the road, and I thought maybe it was just a baby deer, and I stopped my car, I put my brights on, I saw it was like a kangaroo looking thing, and I was like, that's odd, there's a kangaroo in the United States. So I went up to it, and I um, kind of like called it over, see if it would come over to me, it hopped right over to me, I started petting it for a few minutes, and uh, you know, I called my mom, I was like, do these things bite? Because I was making sure I wasn't going to get injured, but um, it was very friendly to me, and um, we figured we would call Noah's Ark because they're the only place around here that has animals like that. But he's very friendly. He's really cute. Snowball's freedom lasted more than eight hours. In the end, a passerby grabbed him by the tail, and he and Rebecca got him back to his pen. A bit traumatized, but none the worse for wear. We should enjoy a full day of sunshine Thursday. The forecast calls for temperatures in the mid-80s under a mostly sunny sky. Friday will be partly sunny, but uh, we cannot rule out the chance of a passing thunderstorm. And it'll be humid. The highs Friday will again be up around 85 degrees. Record Online is the place to find news wherever and whenever it breaks. And for a complete look at uh, all that is happening, pick up uh, tomorrow's edition of the Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Bench.